This is the Cult Faction bonus episode. Now that's what Cult Fiction calls film soundtracks, volume one. This album is not available in the shops. Ah, <laughs> uh, Superman. That's what Cult Faction calls film, film Soundtracks Volume 1. In this week's special episode, we are going to be looking at some of the greatest film soundtracks in the history of cinema, in our opinion. What was good? What was bad about them? Why they stand out? And why they deserve to be on your playlists? Uh, with me today are... Paul Hawkins. Damien Hicks. And we are going to rock your world tonight. Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't guarantee that, but because and even the playlist thing, because you know, I, I, I deliberately didn't go too deep on this, and I didn't try and be all arty farty or, or, or you know, do t- too much research. I, I literally went on those soundtracks that have had an impact on me, and some of them are, I, I, you know, I certainly wouldn't listen to on, on an iPod or in the car. In the car stereo system, I just, I, just want, I just want to make it clear now if Beaches is on your list, please remove it. No, no, Beaches isn't on my list, but I'm, I'm just saying, you know, a lot of, these right, aren't, a lot of these are, are, aren't the, the soundtracks that I would have blaring out of the car window, is what I'm saying. So, why, why are they on your list then? Because they're the some of the top of my film soundtracks, and there's a reason and rationale for those. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Yes, it does. Because you don't... we're going to find out. I guess so. I mean, to be fair, a a bit like you, when we first talked about doing this, I thought I can go one or two ways and go all arty-farty, as you said, and pick soundtracks because they're cool and they have some sort of musical integrity. And then I thought, actually, screw that. When it comes to music, I don't actually believe in uh, guilty pleasures. You either like it or you don't. I mean, I hate most modern music, to be fair and especially the top 40 as it currently is because it's shite and i'll happily sit down and tell you why it's a load of homogenized shite but i'm not going to judge you for liking it so a bit similar to what you've just said paul except i do kind of like the songs that and the, the tracks that are going to be talked about and i would listen so, to them so that's a very so, str- uh, that's why i find no, your no, comment no, really no, strange no. so i'm not saying i wouldn't listen to them or i don't like them but now in this day and age where some of them are 40 something years old and maybe not for for the genre of, of what I am now, I wouldn't have them blaring out of my car stereo. Mm-hmm. Um, and music, do, music doesn't have an expiration date. Ooh. Well, you know what, some of them, you know, it, right, but would you well, have... We'll wait and um, see, we'll wait and see, well don't tell us okay. yet, we'll, we can, we'll see that when we get there. Um, but to be fair, all mine are bitching AF, as the kids used to say. Yeah, well... Well, the jury's out until you've um, <laughs> actually the said what they are. Out. If you've gone all arty farty, I'm not going to be happy. I know, they're bitching. This is stuff like, you know, you could like be in the gym pounding this stuff out and it'll be cool. Or I you could be cru- you pound or you could, Thank you very much. Or you could be cruising the car or maybe trying to rock a chick, as they say, in about 1984. <laughs> are you Def Leppard or something? I guess a rock's out of the question. That was- <laughs> That was the sucky Def Leppard. I'm going to pour some sugar on me, Def Leppard. <laughs> but anyway, let's, let's see what we got then. Right. First to the stands, we call Mr. Paul W. Hawkins with your uh, exhibit A, please. Uh, OK, so, so first of all, um, because, you know, in the past we've talked about the importance of soundtracks and scores to films. OK. And, and some some big scores are you know throughout the film big deep like like we talked about Interstellar um, a few times where it's that pounding soundtrack. Again, I haven't focused on scores as such. I've gone for pure soundtracks. Okay, 
So I'm not because when we talk about um, something like 2001 Space Odyssey, there's a score, there's you know classical music, but it's not really a soundtrack. Okay, you, but, and you kind of get my point when we go through some of the stuff that I said. Okay, but I, I, I've been thinking about the 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 musical songs, i.e., soundtrack, as opposed to scores from films. I'm just preempting if one of you's gone for like I, I don't know, as I said, you're know, some deep and yeah. meaningful oh, or some arty and- farty stuff. And j- just before your big revelation, I just want to say that uh, we are doing these in no particular order, are we? So there's no. So if you're listening in, people, we're not oh, saying any of these. We're not saying any of these are better than the other. Or how did you say that one before that one? We don't want hundreds of emails flooding in. We're just going through our lists of what we think. And yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the other issue that I have is trying to narrow this down into something that we can talk about in in just one episode. So I will give I will give you know five, um, and in no particular order. So the first one, even though it is lowest down on my list, so that's why that's, right. that's okay. First, but but for me, my 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 soundtrack that I want to disclose in a safe environment that is our podcast is the soundtrack to Bugsy Malone from the nineteen seventies. Now the reason for this, as I said, I wasn't going to be meaningful. Well, that was the one with Chachi, wasn't it? And yeah, Chachi so, and um, so, so Bugsy Malone was Scott Scott Bio that was and it. and Jodie Foster playing. You know, they they were teenagers. Well, actually, I'm not quite sure whether Scott Bio was a teenager and Jodie Foster were a teen, teenager, early twenties at that point. But yeah, it was a it was a, a cast of of children um, playing gangsters in in Prohibition U.S. Um, and as I said, you know, they they were they were having gang fights. But they weren't shooting people up with BB uh, or the, the machine guns. They had splurge guns, which, which in essence, um, um, fired custard pie equivalent bullets at people. And splurge guns were the newest things. The old style gangsters were, were still having to compete with old fashioned custard pies. So anyway, uh, it was, it was um, made in the 70s before I was born. Um, but obviously, when you when you were a kid, you had you know VHS tapes, um, and this was one of the ones that was constantly on loop, particularly in the summer holidays. And so, you know, you'd watch it pretty much every day, or every you know, most days of a summer holiday. Um, and so, the songs in this are still ingrained in me. Um, I pretty much know every word to every of the songs on the soundtrack, um, and. As I said, it was it was one of those things as a kid, seeing um, other kids having spurs guns, which were cool custard pie throwing guns. They were driving around in cars that were pedal cars, um, and it was just cause as as a small child, one of the coolest things ever. And it had a soundtrack as well that you were you would sing along to, similar to like nowadays with Disney, where kids pretty much sing along to the likes of Frozen and so on. But these were cooler songs because it was more gangster uh, with an A as opposed to an ER. Um, so so that's what I'm going for. It's it's a random choice, I know. Um, but when I was think, going back it thinking is. about soundtracks to films, I, I couldn't I couldn't get this one out of my head purely for the fact that it stayed with me and I still know all the words. 40 years after I probably first saw it um, and as I said you know I'm not going to um, embarrass myself by singing all this all of the soundtrack now even though I could I'll save that to another podcast um, <laughs> but as I said Bugsy Malone and I had to include it warts and all embarrassing or not because it's it's stuck with me and has probably had a big impact in my soundtrack film life Okay. Was so there a pa- my only comment is, I can't think think of Bugsy Malone without thinking of that Golden Delicious advert that followed shortly oh, with the, after. With the, app- with the apples. Yeah, the eighties. Yeah. With the apples, yeah. I, uh, that just never. Whenever you mention Bugsy Malone, that's the first thing I think of, which is probably I only remember. relevant for people over the age of forty <laughs> and from the UK. <laughs> I just remember who else. If, if, not, Langford, if you don't fit that you? demographic, you're screwed. Bonnie Langford, it, was Bugsy it, yeah, Bonnie Langford was yeah. in it, yeah, and yeah. mate from the so Bill as well, wasn't it? Um, Dave Quinnin yeah. from the Bill, I forget his yeah, name. Yeah, he was in it. 
a lot yeah, of spike from um press gang uh, yeah i imagine oh, dexter, dexter fletcher, 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 fletcher yeah dexter oh yeah fletcher. yeah, yeah. Spike. yeah i'm sure we've missed someone as well um oh there, there's there's a cast of thousands of english you know so put it's one of those and... i'll be honest it's one of those films that i know i've seen but i all i remember is them like chucking stuff about i can't like the the yeah doesn't the it end in a i kind can't of remember type thing. i don't remember much more about it than that all so, the songs apart from the main one you know the, as, as i said anything they wanted to be that one i remember that one i don't remember anymore as i said i could regale you with all the songs i'm not prepared to do that for, for our sake or anyone listening it probably but, cost us a fortune yeah, right? really <laughs> but yeah uh, uh, you know the, the production for a kids film in those days was was you know top notch um and the, the soundtrack you know was was great for for a small child in those days excellent okay so that's the first one from paul moving across to damien what's the what one are you going to okay. drop on us sir? so i'm going to drop and i mean very similar to what paul said and i've already touched on it i don't believe in guilty pleasures when it comes to music you either like something or you don't whether your favorite song is ed sheeran's 18 or Jimi hendrix voodoo joe i'm not going to judge you for it i'll tell you why ed sheeran shit but i won't judge you for liking it anyway to that end i've gone for young guns 2. Uh, so nice strictly one. speaking Ooh. I didn't even it's think not that. necessarily the official soundtrack. Well, this is it. It isn't the official soundtrack per se. It's now it was um, uh, John by Jovi's first solo album. Yeah, he yeah. wrote it inspired by the film. And, and we made that clear. As he said even, it was think, John Bon Jovi's solo album. It is not by Bon Jovi. It is not by, it bon, is Jovi, not by bon Jovi. Despite what the it's radio is, tell you nowadays. Do they? Well, there was her. That was bon, listen to the radio. That was that was Bon Jovi, Blaze of Glory. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Get your facts Fair right. Deuce. I, you I, prick. I, I, yep. Damn straight. It is Sorry, carrying on. Just, bon just, just getting that out. Yeah. Just letting that out. So if you ignore the overplayed, even at the time, because it was on heavy rotation on MTV when it came out, um, Blaze of Glory, which, you know, to be fair, is a pretty decent song. And it, in um, John Bon Jovi's defence, if you like, he wrote that in 10 minutes on the back of a napkin, apparently, whilst on set. The album does contain some really good old fashioned rock and roll style gems and the in the, the actual album itself kind of almost feels like a uh, an extension of the film if that makes sense because there's gaps in the in the tracks that include snippets of um dialogue from from the film itself before tarantino <laughs> way before tarantino i think the 1990 i i I haven't got it in front of me now, but I, I think it did come out around 90, 91, something like that. Well, to be fair, it was back when MTV actually played music, so we, we are certainly talking a long time ago. But, um, I'll have a look. I'll have a look. Now, have a look. Yeah, 1990. 1990 was. Yeah. So, yeah, like I could say good old fashioned rock and roll style songs. You've got contributions from Alton John, Little Richard, and probably most importantly Jeff Beck I think he's got writing credits for a huge amount of the songs that are on there and like I say it's it almost transports you to that kind of the era of that film if that makes sense so I'm not going to dwell on that it's not a classic it's not going to win any well, I probably did it which might have done actually won some awards but it's not going to win any awards in my book but as far as soundtracks go I think it's it's bloody good excellent I have nothing more to add. I'm not going to dwell on John Bon Jovi because he's not my favourite person, but it would be remiss of me not to include this, seeing as I actually bought the album back in 1990. So I think most people probably bought, most people who were around then probably bought the single or the cuss single. I don't know, were cuss singles, were they in 1990? Were they, I thought they might have been a little maybe, bit later maybe, than that. Uh, maybe they were a bit later. It's, the 90s are a blur. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the 1990s were Tom Petty, bit of a blur, grunge, bit of a blur, Euro 96, massive blur, 2001. That's how I remember the 90s. So, yeah, yeah moving on, I'm not moving on from my moving no. on from my problems. <laughs> <laughs> right. My first suggestion I'm throwing onto the table here. I'm waiting for the kickback and to be moaned at as soon as I say it. But it comes from a 1983, in my opinion, cinema forgotten classic. 
Eddie and the Cruisers. The film based on novel by P.F. Kluge. It did have a sequel, but we're not going to talk about that. It starred uh, Michael Parr, Tom Berenger, and it was uh, Joe Pantliano is the manager. Um, I'm just, I think oh, Alan Barkin turns up as well. And basically, they're this sort of really cool Jersey rock band. And um, they have the hit album whilst they're recording the sequel, A Season in Hell, based on Arthur Rambold. Uh, Eddie disappears. Is it? They think he's dead and all that. And basically, Eddie's, well, as far as the world's concerned, Eddie is dead. And then we pick up later on, and it's like a documentary. And uh, the, um, the band is sort of, we see where they are now and they kind of get back together. And there's always been this thing about what happened to those original recordings of the second album. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You're giving us the synopsis of the film here. We're I know, talking I'm about the soundtrack. It. I'm getting to it. Is, you know, I could have given but you a synopsis saying... of, of Young Guns too, if you like. But... <laughs> yeah, but I think, I think most people would have seen Young Guns. Most people although, have although, to be fair to Brett, I did have to explain what Bugs and Malone was. Yeah. I'm just thinking that it might be able to be I'm just saying, people. I'm just putting it out there. I agree this with is you. about the soundtrack, not the film. There's 101 films that have shite soundtracks, but we could have talked about them just because they're a really good film. I was, I was just trying <laughs> to give you the that. idea of the film because most people probably have never heard of it unless they found it late at night about one o'clock in the morning on Channel 4 or BBC Two. <laughs> oh, well, it's is probably what... worth at this point saying that I am in a foul mood, so I might chip in with. <laughs> snarky comments and i apologize for it in advance but they probably stay and remain in the ad, in the edit so carry on you edit it so you've got a choice <laughs> yeah That's so basically they're <laughs> and so they're, they're, they're this hard rocking jersey band very um springsteen and um we find out what happened there and ah, the new jersey i thought you meant the channel islands i'm with you now uh, yeah <laughs> they're, they're cruising around guernsey on a no yeah no. Hooking up with Bergerac. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry, no, I've broken your thread. You've totally broken my thread. No, but it's a really good film, and there is a massive twist at the end, and it really is a kind of... Um, you sort of see, like, the history of the band through flashbacks and all that sort of stuff. And now, the soundtrack, um, originally, they kind of wanted to apparently do it on a kind of... Dion and the Belmonts meets the doors, apparently. But then there's a bit in the film where Eddie says something like, we're just a Jersey band and we do that. And then they kind of went Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. That was kind of their focus. And then a lot of the music from that came from a band called uh, John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band, who were actually from Rhode Island. But, you know, down up the road a bit. But um, very much, if you're thinking Springsteen E Street Band, that's what a lot of the Eddie and the Cruiser sort of stuff sounds like and the the big tune on there was on the dark side which actually went number one across america on like the billboard rock chart and the hot 100 no number seven on the hot 100 sorry and a lot of the other singles have been re-released and that over the years and they they still chart well so it's it's become a forgotten gem and it's probably the best album springsteen never recorded <laughs> and John and John, and John Cafferty himself and the Beaver Brown Man will feature again later on in one of my selections because they they've actually been around a lot and people don't realise that. Yes, yeah, so you got a spoiler coming up, but yeah, <laughs> Eddie and the Cruisers, the official soundtrack. I mean, it's billed as their album, but really it's John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band. Have a Google and have a listen. Okay, well, as you were talking there and saying about the songs, I, I think I recognise the name of at least one of them. I think we should put a playlist on Spotify. You just read my mind. I was thinking the same. And I wouldn't say let's put the whole entire album of each of the uh, soundtracks that we've just or are about to talk about. But a select no. few from each of the soundtracks might be a good idea. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think as you listen to this, people, you will check us on Spotify and you will find a Now That's What Cult Faction Calls Film Soundtracks Volume 1 playlist and it will be ready for you to stick in your fuzzy warblers. Indeed. Or listen to, if that's what you'd rather do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, that was that was Clockwork Orange, if anyone doesn't know. <laughs> OK, moving on. Um, over to you, Paul. Okay, so for for my next choice in soundtrack, I, I'm leaving the uh, well, what the seventies behind, even though I listened to it in the eighties, um, and I'm moving on to my teen angst years um, now, uh, and the the 
the dark foreboding nights um, and memories of me wearing <laughs> trench, trench coats. Uh, and one of the films that resonated particularly with me, you know, not just from the comics, but also from the, the actual film was The Crow. Now, I've got to be completely honest that there, there's a lot of the um, songs on The Crow soundtrack that are out of my comfort zone at the time, shall we say? I mean, the the the, the soundtrack includes bands like um, um, well, things like The Violent Femmes, Nine Inch Nails, uh, Rage Against Machine, um, The Cure, Rollins Band, um, and Pantera uh, uh, as well. So, so it's it's a, a whole smorgasbord um, of, of bands performing in this. But you know, um, I just love the way that they 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 seem to match up the the songs for the right bit. I mean, the the, um, the Cure song in this uh, is Burn. And they use it so well, you know, particularly in a lot of the scenes where the crow's flying around and some of the um, um, cityscape shots and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and it just fits so well with what's going on at the time within the film. And it's such an iconic film for me uh, and has a lot of um, memories of the time, uh, particularly, you know, it, it's just one of those things. Um, and, and it's just got such, such you know, songs that that in, inspire a lot of um uh, or resonate a lot with what's going on in the film i mean as i said you know when, when there's a um big old action scene going on with, with death and guns and and saws then you've got the the banging tunes going on there the the likes of uh, as i said pantera going on or or uh, after the flesh um by i, I can't remember who it was by now but uh, again, you know, it's um, you know some some real hard hitting songs to accompany the the action sequences, um, and also some of the deep moody songs as well, like uh, "It Can't Rain All the Time," which is one of the songs that you know uh, Draven's band were allegedly performed uh, within The Crow. Um, and as I said, you know, it, it's it's a stonking soundtrack to accompany the film um i mean we, we talked about stone temple pilots the the other week in one of our other podcasts and it's got big empty which i think is probably one of stone temple pilots best songs um probably probably not the most famous but in my head is is probably one of the best songs um so so that's i i couldn't go through you know when we're talking about our best soundtracks um without mentioning The Crow, because as I said, you know, it was one of those ones that A, I used to watch all the time, and I also used to, to listen to late at night as I was going to to, to, to sleep, probably on a probably on a tape at the time. So so that's that's my next choice for, for a soundtrack. Ah, uh, there's some good songs on that. Yeah, good choice. I hadn't even thought of that one either. That's another one I'd forgotten about. Uh, spinning across to the other side of the table, Damien, what's your next entry? Okie dokie, so as we are doing this in no particular order, next up on my list is the soundtrack to singles. Oh, how about waving? my list? That was on my list. Oh, okay. That's right. Well, what did you have? Singles. Uh, that's what I was going to choose next. That's right, Damien's got it now. It's all right, it's all right. There's no, there's no but it just no just shows how just shows how great it was that we all had it. Exactly. Yeah. So you've got Paul Westerberg's dyslexic heart with its Hey Jude esque. I'm not I'm not even gonna try and do it in tune because I everyone knows full well that I can't sing, but it goes nah 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 nah. Um if you don't know what I'm talking about, go and listen to the soundtrack, you soon will. It's very much like a as I say. A hey Jude esque um, song, if that makes sense. It's comfortably nestled between Alice in Chains' Wood, Pearl Jam's State of Love and Trust, Soundgarden's Birth Ritual, and the Peace to Resistance, which I think you both know exactly what I'm about to say, is Chloe Dancer, Crown of Thorns um, from Mother Love Bone. The greatest band you've never heard of. Exactly. And gone too soon. But then yeah. I guess if they hadn't gone, we wouldn't have got Pearl Jam. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Um, not to mention Jimi Hendrix, Smashing Pumpkins, Mud Honey. And let's be honest, 
there's a whole generation of people out there that only went and saw that film because of the soundtrack and the cameos yeah. that were listed to be in the film in the first place. <laughs> it isn't the best of films. It's a good film, don't get me wrong, but it isn't the best of films. But the soundtrack more than more than makes more, up for that. more more. Can I say I've still never seen the film, but I've listened to the soundtrack like You've never seen the film. Yeah, never you have. seen it all. I've seen bits of it. I've seen Jesus. like bits here and there. I've never seen it all the way through. I think I've watched it as a group at someone's house. I can't remember whose. Yeah, I, in that case, I probably don't remember seeing it. He was probably that... in the kitchen at the time. <laughs> I was always fun in the kitchen party. <clears throat> what I've just realised as well, though, is that it was released on June the 30th, 1992. So it's just... Wait there, I'm just carrying on. Like, at a, you know, I've just worked out that we've just had its 29th anniversary and I've gone cold, feel really scared and are freaking out now. 29 years ago. It so start saving now, Brett, for the 30th anniversary <laughs> Blu-ray. <laughs> man no it's got me 13, 29 years old shit well we but, were a lot younger in those days indeed so there you have it singles as it seems yeah. to have both been on your list or on both your lists if there's anything you want to add feel free it was oh. just a stonking stonking soundtrack um uh, as you as you mentioned, and you know, when you look at the soundtrack that's available to buy, yeah, that's got like thirteen brilliant songs, but also it's got the um, the snippets from songs uh, uh, throughout the film. Too much to go into now, but it's just great, and and everything. You know, I mean, we were into. Well, I, I hate labeling it grunge at the time, but we we're into so many of these bands at the time. We knew that the the soundtrack was you know going to involve though we, we knew the cameos from from mtv before we saw the film you know the, the bits where eddie vedder turns up and all that kind of great stuff you kind of wish it more than anything else you were in seattle living with them at the time all right they were a few few years older than us but yeah um it's not the best film ever but the soundtrack makes it and you know carries it along and, and puts it on a on a on a, another level as opposed to if, if those songs weren't included. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a Cameron Crowe set piece, isn't it? You know, he's, he's always had that um, soundtrack to, like, it's good films. Some of his films aren't that good. But um, <laughs> especially that one with the little kid in with the glasses and that other bloke. Um, but, yeah, this but, one, this one, you know, it, it, it hit up. He has a good thing. He manages to pick, like, a moment in time sometimes and just commit it to film and the music definitely does that and again he he may appear later but that's how that's how we've always said like a, a soundtrack or a score can make a break a film and in this case it certainly makes the film yeah yeah i think the soundtrack like I said, I, I, it's not it isn't a great film i think I, I would imagine speaking for myself at least at the time it was out and the age we were when it was out probably didn't really appreciate the context of the film as much because it's a lot about you know dating and stuff like that which how are we in 19 whatever it was we were just out the rock yeah so but yeah there you go singles that go, takes us to you, that takes us that takes us back 29 years and i'm still i'm still freaked out by that so i'm gonna go then i'm gonna pick up the singles baton and i am gonna go to another classic um, Cameron Crowe film. Uh, and I'm gonna I, I go... thought you were going to say, I was going to take us even further back in time with Summer Holiday. <laughs> <laughs> no, it definitely wouldn't be. Um, it, no, no Cliff. Or, no, <laughs> I can't even say that on air because we'll get pulled off, um, so to speak. Right, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, following on from the Cameron Crowe uh, singles film, I'm going to go for the, his 2001 movie, almost famous about the struggling band uh, yeah, Stillwater but... and how they go through and again another it captures a moment in time soundtrack I mean you've got the the fever dog etc by the, the fictional band Stillwater but it was written by Nancy Wilson his his missus as well and um but you've got um Paul Simon's America on there Pete Townsend Sparks um, wouldn't have made a difference Todd Rundgren whoever you say that I've never said that properly 
Rod Stewart run with the faces. Um, obviously, Tiny Dancer, Elton John, which everyone pretends is their favourite Elton John song now. But no one knew that song until <laughs> Almost Famous came out. No one gave a toss about Tiny Dancer until that scene in Almost Famous. And now everyone's like, that was always my favourite. That was yeah. a great song. I love that Elton John song. You didn't even know it until this film came out. And that scene shows you the power of music and the power of a good soundtrack. And also a Simple Man by Leonard Skinner, which is also amazing. And loads of other stuff as well. Plus, as always, there's like a million songs that didn't make it on the soundtrack that pop up through the film. Um, yeah, Sabbath turn out, Jeffro Tolls, The Guess Who, Neil Young, Fleetwood Mac. I mean, there's Deep Purple. They're all in the film somewhere, but the main soundtrack... For some reason, they're not on, probably because it costs a shitload of money. But so they, they stuck it to 17 instead. But well worth checking out, both as a film and as a soundtrack. Um, almost famous, anyone? Um, I'm completely unprepared. I remember I really enjoyed um, Almost Famous, but it's been a long time, and it is a good film. I'm not going to deny that, but I really don't remember much about it, to be perfectly honest. It, yeah, it was a great film, and you're completely right about... Um... Um, Elton John um, and um, um, Tiny Dancer because I hadn't heard of it before then um, but it, it, it was set up so so well with, with them all in the tour bus singing along to it it, it, it is a cool film um, goes on a bit if I'm completely honest but but it's got a, a stonking soundtrack to, to, to pull it along there we go so that's another one that's going to be on our playlist um, spinning back round to you Paul Oh really? No, oh, let me the, let me the, bring up my the, list. The spotlight turns once again. Okay, so so for for this one, um, I had to include it. Uh, I'm not sure what what kind of reception it's going to get from you two, but but for for me at the time, to to certainly, it was those times when we were going out um, clubbing at the likes of Thursdays, um, and I had to include Reservoir Dogs. Um, because at the time it was, and let's face it, it, it did have a big impact uh, on, the, on the film scene at the time. Quentin Tarantino really made a name for himself. It, it, was, it was probably overhyped a lot in, in being gory or, or too graphical compared to nowadays standards. But at the time, you know, he was trying to do something on a low budget that was quite gritty um, and it had a um, a, a soundtrack that, that kind of played up to the scenes, but almost in the, in the comfortable ways, you know, where you've got um, Stuck in the Middle with You, where um, Thingy Bob's cutting off someone's uh, ear, uh, dancing around at the same time. Um, and But it's more than that. I just remember for this, um, not just the film, but because I actually bought the soundtrack to it, um, I, I used to practically have it on repeat um, every day. Well, not all day, every day, but I, I, I play, probably play it most days when I woke up in the summer. Uh, and there's something about listening to it when, when the sun's shining. And, and there's some really cracking songs on there. I mean, it's, it's, it's a typical hodgepodge of songs as well. You know, where, where as opposed to, you, you know, when we're, when we're talking about um, some, some soundtracks where they're completely rock or uh, grunge. This was a bit of pretty much everything going on from Little Green Bag to, um, what was it, um, Do Dolly Parton was probably in there as well. But that's it. It was one of those things um, that accompanied the film and um, it was almost a juxtaposition as well uh, through the, some of the scenes. Uh, uh, and I'm not saying it was almost in, you know, a Zack Snyder um uh, almost like um, a nursery rhyme going along with something, but it was a more comical song while someone was being killed or, or whatever. And you know, it kind of set up uh, an opportunity for, for for the likes of Pulp Fiction with the the huge stonking soundtrack that I was tempted to to to, to put above Reservoir Dogs. But I thought, well, no, actually, Reservoir Dogs was was the start of this, um, and actually, I, I think it was more clever choice. Of, of soundtrack than Pulp Fiction. No, I, I, I was going to say, I totally agree with you. I think this was, we said about it earlier on when we talked about um, Blaze of Glory, where it had the extracts in, but Tarantino did sort of, although other people had done it, took it to a new level. You almost had it like you were listening to a radio yeah. station. You had all the little clips in between and 
to me, if you didn't have that, you wouldn't have had all the things that came later in your Grand Theft Auto games and that, where you suddenly had radio stations playing the songs with the DJs in between and the adverts and all that. To me, that all comes from the Tarantino influence and the, the sort of level of detail he put into everything. Yeah, uh, uh, and, but, but, but I think for me, you know, uh, and I almost went for Pulp Fiction, but that was, that, that kind of felt a bit too over engineered maybe uh, where, whereas Reservoir Dogs was uh, as you said you know it had the snippets of, 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 of the DJ in between I, I actually Some, I oh. actually had the Kill Bill 1 and 2 on my list <laughs> at the time. for exactly the same reasons you said it was just more I think the Kill Bill 1 I enjoy more now because the other ones did get played to death so much yeah. but that just shows you like how yeah. much um, the, the influence they had and like how everyone was listening to them and club you know there were those soundtracks that rock clubs were playing dance clubs were playing rave clubs were playing trendy bars were playing scum bars were playing you know it was everywhere it was one of those sort of it got everyone at some point somehow and even if you hadn't seen the film you might know one of the songs because of that soundtrack yeah, yeah no doubt and i think it also there's also an element of uh, what you said earlier about almost famous where there's there's songs on there that were essentially kind of i wouldn't even go as far to say to forgotten classics they're obscure songs that if you're into mm. a particular genre of music you well and truly love but not a lot of other people have heard of then all of a sudden oh yeah that's been my favorite song for 20 years yeah. I, I i love little green bag i've it's been on my play on my playlist i've, I've got mixtapes that i've made myself no you haven't you have not you've yeah. never heard of that song until Son of a Preacher Man was the same. That was another yeah, one. Suddenly yeah. everyone loved that. No, you exactly. just when it started, you all thought it was Cypress Hill. Yeah, I remember those days. People jumping up on the dance floor because they thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the Cypress Hill. Jump around or something? No, 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 it, was, no it was um, Hits from the Bong. Uh, yes, That's the right. one. Yeah. Apparently. Which is actually a great song, but it's, um, yeah, always made me chuckle, that did. Anyway, so any more to add to. Uh, no, I, I just think Paul's right. Mr. Reservoir Tarantino. I, I think, Mr. I, think in, I, I just think in general, Mr. Tarantino, with that, reinvented the expectations of the soundtrack, and yeah. like, and, I mean, like, and, I, and raised the bar. I think we'd hit a point where some soundtracks were just, um, you know, like they'd hire Brian Adams to sing a song and bang a load of shit on a record with it and pump it out, and it was the single. Whereas Tarantino made it the whole experience again. I think. Yeah, coming um, into the 90s and, and and again i i think train spotting took a lot from that i know people might say that in a minute if that's on someone's list i apologize i won't go into the music of it but that was another one they did a similar thing they had little bits of dialogue in between they had the songs and again it was that kind of it started a new trend of in soundtracks well when you look at guardians of the galaxy and and the soundtrack that they've got it, you know it, yeah it, again it, then, yeah the, the, the cuts between their songs going along with the action on 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 the screen okay, almost gonna cut, almost gonna, almost mimics i'm gonna cut that one off my list as well now it's well, been no, mentioned no, no, that's right i've got no, i've got, I've got two thing. i've got too many anyway and this is what i wanted to say about <laughs> it so it's, so it's all good it's all good <laughs> but again yeah more songs in there that forgotten about you know five stair steps you know all child things are gonna get easy a great tune but exactly yeah yeah had been, I mean, it has shown up in films now and then, but it was, it's a forgotten one. I mean, um, hooked on a feeling again from Reservoir Dogs turns yeah, up, yeah, yeah, and again it, it became it, a hit all over again. You know, a lot of the younger kids knew it from that. Now, then later on, they're going to be terrified when they see someone getting tortured to it. But you know, <laughs> it's all part, it's all part of growing up. Okay, yeah. So, Carrie, what were you going to say about that for? So, you with the snippets and the no, that, that's me, dear. Okay. Anything else to add on that, Damien? No, no, not at all. Okay, well, we spin back to you then, sir. Oh, that takes it back to me, doesn't it? Okay, so there's, I think, just when we're talking about soundtracks, or when I'm talking about soundtracks, there's just no way I can't include Back to the Future in that list. Now, obviously, it spawned two hits for Huey Lewis and the News, um, Back in Time, which was never actually released as a single, but still did really well at airplay on I don't know, American rock or something like that over in the States. Yeah. And obviously the power of love, which, you know, pretty much 
I don't think anyone can hear that song without automatically thinking of a DeLorean or something to do with Back to the Future. It's just virtually impossible. So it's synonymous with the film. Plus, the film itself introduced me to Sam Cooke. I would never have heard, mm-hmm. well, I probably would now, but back at the time uh, in 1985 or 86, probably when I first saw the film, I would never have heard of Sam Cooke. So I wouldn't know what Earth Angel was. And um, the other song now, I've now forgotten because I haven't got it written down. I don't really have anything more to add. It's a pop music type soundtrack. It's got, Did they have... there's, no, I say, there's no musical integrity really to it. It's just. Oh. I've never listened well, to the actual sort of soundtrack, but does it have all the like the Mr. Sandman and all that stuff on it as well? No, it was quite no, amazing. they're oh, not. No. So, so that stuff isn't included on the soundtrack, but the things like Earth Angel is, and the other song I can't remember what else he sings now at the um, Enchantment Under the Sea dance. Oh, Johnny, be good at the end, wasn't it? No, not that one. There's there's another Sam Cooke song. I can't remember what it is. Now. The the only thing I was going to say when you said you wouldn't have heard of Sam Cooke, Damon, is actually you know what two years later you absolutely would have been bombarded with sam cook and in a space yeah i know but it was before that so <laughs> no good, so yeah good soundtrack there i like that all right i am going i guess it's back to me now i am going to go for a seminal this is the the muso soundtrack but it is a cracking soundtrack and again probably set the bar for what was going to come later on with Mr. Tarantino. And I'm going to go for the Curtis Mayfield Superfly soundtrack, <laughs> which was basically, it put the black exploitation music into the mainstream. People probably didn't even realise it was a film. And that Superfly song has been sampled, covered, hip-hopped over, rapped over, and whatever else over for since it came out back in the early 70s, 72. And... um. You know, and obviously, you know, Curtis Mayfield is, you know, without that, you wouldn't have got your shaft, you wouldn't have got all your other stuff that came from that. And yeah, and like, um, you know, the, the Pusher Man song and yeah, there's all sorts on there that you would know, but you don't realise you know, because it's probably been in an advert or used for other things since then. But the Superfly song, the title song is probably the main one that has been sort of popping up in films and played to death for ages. I'm trying to think what films it's been in now, but there's too many. Um, no, I can't even think of one now, but it's in films. <laughs> but it, obviously it's in the Superfly movie. But um, yeah, it's just the 70s sort of funk coming into sort of, coming into sort of the early sort of, what I guess would become sort of the rap side of it with the sort of bleak lyrics and the, the street life and the, you know, talking about drugs and pimps and pushers and the sort of the dark side of music and cocaine and drug you know and all that sort of thing and it was yeah it um you know some of that stuff does sound a little bit samey after a while but this was the one that started it so he's allowed to be <laughs> so yeah curtis mayfield a super fly apparently it's classed as psychedelic soul funk <laughs> I was just trying to I mean to me, I was trying to think of what to call it, but to me it's black exploitation music, but it's officially it's psychedelic soul funk. So there you okay. go. Anything else? Anyone like a bit of psychedelic soul funk? I have my moments Not, of psychedelic yeah. soul funk. <laughs> I know we like to bang out the old bit in the cop action office now and then, maybe on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to you, Paul. Okay, so I am going to go back to the eighties. Um, in what can only be described as one of my childhood classics, Boys in Blue. No, uh, so I. Boys in Blue. So I, I couldn't do a, a soundtrack um, episode without mentioning, like we have done probably several times before, Transformers the movie <laughs> it's on it's on my list as well it, it just has to be i mean even even today i i get the hair standing up on, on, on the you know back of my neck and or, or head or whatever the, the saying is so some of these songs um even now you know when um the touch comes on uh by, by stan bush well it's performed by stan bush yeah he wrote that he wrote the touch yeah 
uh, whenever I hear that, it's like, yeah, I can take on the world. Yeah, I can destroy Megatron and, and, and Starscream. There's nothing I can't do. Um, it's just just a classic, classic film for me. Um, and the soundtrack, and, and not just what you can buy on, on, online as, as the downloadable soundtrack, but also the, the, the accompanying score that, and, and we, I, I may be laboriously gone out about this before, but as a cartoon, the amount of time and effort spent into the, the, the soundtrack and the score transforms the movie was phenomenal. Um, and even the, the, the music in between scenes and, and accompanying the scenes as well, not just the, the Dutch music was, was brilliant. Um, but as I said, you know, you, you've got Stan Bush, as I mentioned, you've got Weird Al Yankovic that, that makes it makes an appearance. You've got the Transformers um, theme tune done by Lion. It, it's just superb. It, even even to this day, um, you know, uh, I can still see the bit where Optimus Prime starts to transform um, to when the touch is playing. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I, I couldn't, I couldn't include. Uh, I had to include this. Megatron must be stopped. No matter the, matter cost. the cost. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. You, you got, got the touch. Everyone listening to that has got goosebumps now. If they know what that meant. <laughs> yeah. But hey, even you... on that soundtrack, even sorry, the button in, even the um instrumental stuff, like the Vince DiCola stuff, was yeah. awesome as well. Like the the more scoring stuff. Which yeah. again, he's someone who's going to appear later on on my list again. But um, yeah, amazing stuff. Sorry, Paul. No, no. As I said, yeah, but, but that's my point. You know, the the whole instrumental score to it as well. Uh, and, and Vincent Tacola uh, wrote "Dare." Um, you can win if you dare, dare. Which is at the start of the film where where they're racing back to um, the Autobot the, City. Autobot City um, as it's being attacked. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, I mean, it, let's be honest, there's, there's not too many songs in, in the actual soundtrack. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's it, just it, it, it didn't need of, of my it, childhood it days. The ones that yeah. were there were amazing. That was all it needed. If you, if yeah. you had an 80s film and Stan Bush wasn't on the soundtrack, and something <laughs> was wrong with you. Yeah, so uh, as I said, that, that's, that's it. Transformers movie soundtrack, 1986. Classic. Spinning the spotlight round, Damien. Okay, so as we're not doing this in any particular order, and I did struggle with this one, there was conf- there was a there was a conflict of mm-hmm. whether I should even put this on the list or not, because now it has you two on there, it has Lisa Loeb, it's got Dinosaur Junior, and it's got Big Mountain's cover of Baby I Want I Love Your Way, <laughs> but it's also got Crowded House. I like Crowded House. And I despise Crowded I House. But you know passion. more Crowded House songs than you realise. <laughs> yeah, you do, because they still get played now. I mean, it was Dad Rock back then, so God knows what it's called now. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Reality Bites soundtrack. And again, it's not a great film. It really, it really isn't. I think it was Ben Stiller's first directing job, I think, if I remember rightly. But it, there yeah, the the soundtrack as I said, you two, Lisa Loeb, Dinosaur Junior, and I love Big Mountain's cover of Baby I Love Your Way. It's just awesome. I probably wouldn't go as far as to say it's the it's better than the original because there's not many songs that are better than the original recording. But what does let it down is Crowded House. I don't even know the name of the song. I don't want to know the name of the song. I'm not interested in knowing the name <laughs> of the song. So don't even tell me. If you want to say it, I'll just look off in the distance and you can say it for anyone who might want to know but just, there you go guessing. reality bites it's probably take the weather with you or some nonsense like that i always skip it i know i always used to skip it rather when it came on yeah they're polluting fleet with mac now yes yeah he is isn't he it's just wrong so many levels anyway i don't have really much else to add they're just great songs that are on the soundtrack it's again said it's not a great film it's got no artistic integrity whatsoever it's kind of Let's just throw some songs that I like onto an album and we'll make it the soundtrack, I'd imagine, because it doesn't look like they, it necessarily fits um, the narrative of the film as it goes through. But there we go. It's a damn good soundtrack. Listen to it. Apart from Crowded House. Skip that one. 
go for a week probably a long week as they tend to have like two guitar solos of really slow boring twiddly bits and then they repeat the chorus about four times but i'm not a fan <laughs> let it out let it out you're in a safe place you can share here you're on the trust tree on the branch of understanding cool i like that <laughs> i'm gonna copyright that i bet someone already has <laughs> no doubt so i guess that takes us back to you brett oh yes it does right let's see what's next on my list i've still got a few left that i've managed to get in yet so i'm gonna try <laughs> Uh, next one on my list is bizarrely something I probably wouldn't normally listen to, but it just really fits the film. Is it Crowded House and, the movie? <laughs> and it's just really awesome. Uh, it's, it's the French art house version, House de Cladid. But um, no, it's not at all. But there is a French connection. It's Daft Punk and it's Tron Legacy. Mm. The sound. I'm not okay. saying it's. I'm not saying it's a film, but the but the soundtrack is just really. It, it's just really cool. And like keeps. To be honest, if the soundtrack wasn't in the film, I probably would have stopped watching. It's almost like it's. It really fits in. It's, I guess it's more of a score than an official soundtrack. If we're going to go that way, but it is almost like the pulse of the movie that just keeps everything going, even when the script kind of dries up a little bit here and there and um, sort of dies at times. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but the the the, mood, the music keep the beat going and it keeps it just going through the whole film and I mean and the soundtrack pretty much is the exact length of the whole film as well so they for for a soundtrack to actually be the whole length of a movie and be even the quieter points the higher points and being a whole bit I think is quite rare because normally you know it will most music stops at some point during a film but. <laughs> You know, it just keeps it going, and uh, you know, if you watch it without the soundtrack, it's just a bit shit, really. There's some nice bits, but with the soundtrack, it just sounds cool, and it sounds interesting, and it sounds exciting, and it it keeps you going. And I've just realised that it came out like 11 years ago. I thought it was quite recent. Welcome to the feeling old podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the shit um, old <laughs> podcast. Um, so even that's uh, that's a new film, but it's oh well. But yeah, really good, and it's just I think the sound. It's another one of those examples where the soundtrack saves the film. Cool, I've had a few of those. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the, my last one on the list is definitely a soundtrack that saved the film. But we'll come on to that later. I've I've got to confess, I don't even know. I've never seen Tron legacy so, yeah. i've obviously seen the, yeah. the original i was say, yeah, think, think you original. can say you haven't seen tron no no it's, it, it is worth a watch <laughs> no, 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 no. it's worth a watch it? and it, it does pick up from the original you know it all, it all ties in nicely they've you know they've done their own work they've they've made it link up and there's no it's not one of those ones where they make a sequel and just forget anything that happened in the previous one and like ruin all the um continuity no they're they're up on that but it just yeah an interesting choice having Daft Punk do it, but it works, and it just sort of yeah. Give it a look, give it a watch. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay, there we go. Every day's a school day. Oh yes, <laughs> bloody is. <laughs> right, so that takes us back, Mr. Hawkins. Uh, I was just looking at my list, and I think we've already covered most of them. I think you pinched a couple. Uh, we've mentioned Train Spot. You've mentioned Pulp Fiction. I did have down, even though it's not a, what I would say, a classic film. But I did have down Saturday Night Fever as being a complete soundtrack that marries up with the, the film and was a stonking disco soundtrack but none none of which that i would have blasting out of my car stereo which is where, where i think we came back to to originally even though um, I think, but... even though i think it is, is a stonking soundtrack to the film and i think you know when we're talking about what the bgs did that I, I, I can't i can't even you know the their their vocal range and the amount of octaves that between the, the few of them that they could reach 
I don't think many other people could. Um, and I think if you're going through soundtracks, that, that would probably have to be up there. Um, I didn't want to mention this, um, but recently, uh, oh, I, I know what you two are like. Um, okay. You have dance lessons. No, no, but this is a different one. As I said, I'm not going to go into any of these in real, real detail. But for me, when when I became a dad, I, I, I became a soft little git. And so you'd get the little adverts on telling you about water aid and, and you'd get a little you know, lump in your throat. I, I don't know what happened. I don't, I don't know whether it was just me. Um, and then over the years, you know, you, you find yourself watching, you know, films with the kids and you're watching Frozen. I'm not saying Frozen's one of them, but but recently uh, where where the the, the uh, daughter, Neve, our middle daughter, is, is growing up a bit, she starts to get involved in, in songs. So we watched The Greatest Showman a, a couple of years ago. Um, and I have to say, guilty pleasure. That that's one of my top soundtracks <laughs> is the greatest showman. Um and I don't know whether you two have even seen it or even know what I'm talking about. It's a it's a I think it's impossible to not know what you're talking about because it's oh, fucking everywhere. It's the but one where no, Wolverine it. It's the one where Wolverine sucks, isn't it? Well, I, I, again, I, uh, I'm almost apologetic, okay. But I So you should be. But I love the film and I love the soundtrack. Uh, I thought this was a safe space. Um, <laughs> no, as I not... said at the start of this, there is no guilty pleasures. If you like a song, you like a song. I can you're tell right, you what you're right. right. It, 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 you're it, you're it, allowed it, to like it. it. It's more than liking a song, Damien. We're just going to saw that I, branch off the tree of trust. And and you, you can cut this out of the podcast because it's not. No, it's that's right. Really... We're, we're, we're leaving this in. But, but yeah, I, 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 have another drink. I, I, I haven't I haven't been drinking. I know. Um, so yeah, I don't just love one of the songs. I, I love the whole soundtrack and I love the film. And and I think that's because you know I watched it with the kids at Christmas time last year or something. Um, so actually, all joking apart, I as I said, I haven't seen the film. So when you say the soundtrack, this it, it's a musical. The film. Oh it? yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's so a, it's, it's, it's a film it, musical. The soundtrack is songs from the the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, but but as I said, you know, I I yeah, it's it's my guilty pleasure um, that that I I, I love. Um, I wish I did, wish I didn't in a lot of ways because it is <laughs> it is this musical. Uh, it's got Hugh Jackman doing singing and dancing. Um, but yeah, it's 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 really it's really one of those things that just helps you know takes me back to as I said you know um, when little one was a couple of years younger. Um, Christmas time, you know, that kind of, you know, There's no need to be year. afraid. Yeah, I know, but it's not rock and roll, is it? Um, but as I said, yeah, I, I know pretty much all the words off by heart. Um, and <laughs> yeah, um, I might I might watch it on my own every now and again as well. I think I might want to stop talking now and move on. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah, if I yeah, so, you, if, so if, as I, as if I, I said... If I butt into you and it's tattooed on your arm, you're losing so, so, your arm. So as I said, as I said, Damien, if you want to cut that out and just say "Spinal Tap" is is, is my next <laughs> is a manic soundtrack that I was going. Piss go off to. doing my list. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that, that's, that's that's probably all my song, uh, soundtracks done now. Cool. Okay, I've got a couple left. One uh, I've got one one, tap, one main one left now. that I want to talk about, and then I've got a few yeah. honourable mentions, which I thought Paul was. I thought Paul was going to at least mention one of my honourable mentions, so I'm quite surprised about that. I thought he was <laughs> going to do my top one, but um, <laughs> go on, Damien. So, last on my list is the soundtrack to Repo Man. Oh, you didn't go for Island for either. Go on. I'm, I'm okay. intrigued. No, no, okay. I, I just thought someone would have it, had it. I, I it maybe because we just forgot about it. That's what yeah. I mean. I'm excited. Then. I literally, on, I me, didn't. Tell me about Reaper Man. When I did this, I didn't research. I went literally what the what came to my head rather yeah, than looking same, it up. Yeah, so you're here. right. I probably have forgotten shed loads. But so yeah, Repo Man. Um, the film itself is just this weird, absurd sci-fi political satire on Reagan's America. I think it came out in 90, 80, 1985 or 1986, something like that. Are you about the original one? 84. Yes, 84 was it. Yeah, so um, 
none of it actually makes sense. It it's just a bizarre film, really, really bizarre film. And it, but it's worth watching if you haven't seen it. I mean, it was pulled from cinemas on its first week of release because it wasn't received well. And as I say, it was just so weird. I just don't think people got it. But the soundtrack also was released at the same time. And it's got punk classics on there like Iggy Pop, Black Flag, Suicidal Tendencies. That kind of garnered a lot of support. A lot of people started buying it. And as it reached somewhere in the region of like half a million sales or something, the studio decided to re-release the film. And it's now classed as a true cult classic. I, I I suppose it is, I guess, in that true sense. I think it's, this was the first time I ever heard Black Flag if I, in my life. Quite possibly, yeah. I mean, I certainly wouldn't. I didn't know suicidal tendencies until I'd seen the film. But I think so. The reason I've put it on my list is not that I do like the songs that are on there. I like Iggy Pop, etc. But it's more for the fact of what that soundtrack did for the film. So the film would have bombed completely, and we even I don't necessarily think we would even know what it was, whether you call it a cult classic or not. If it hadn't been for the soundtrack because it wouldn't have got the attention it did get you know two three four weeks later or whatever it was when they re-released it so that's why it's on there i think with the exception i can't remember the suicidal tendency song that's on there now but that's probably the one of the only songs on there that i would go ah yeah i do know exactly who that is if that makes sense whereas the iggy yeah. pop one he i think he wrote specifically for the film but they're not they're not punk rock classics that are on the actual album itself and there's 101 better punk rock songs that you could listen to but as i say because of what this album did for the film that's why it's on my list and if you haven't seen the film go watch it because it is just weird funny but weird and makes no sense even in hindsight it still doesn't make much sense okay i need to see the film again because it's been a long time for that one and yeah i can't really remember it so that 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 takes us over to you brett okay now i am surprised that no one has um done this one yet because i thought this would have been this is one of the first ones i thought of actually when i thought of soundtracks and growing up i went for the original motion picture soundtrack of rocky four no reactions um, I mean, it had. I mean, we had Burning Heart by Survivor, Hearts on Fire, um, written by Vince DiCola and performed by John Cafferty, as in Eddie and the Cruisers, we mentioned earlier. You had Eye of the Tiger on there again, because, you know, it's a Rocky film. Um, you had Living in America, James Brown, No Easy Way Out by Robert Tepper, uh, the, obviously the, the Rocky training song by Vince DiCola. And... Um, you know, and all the sort of Vince color instrumental stuff that if you go and listen to it in Rocky IV, may or may not be exactly the same stuff he did for Transformers the movie at a slightly different tempo or key. Just saying. Because it's um, it's very, very similar. It's sort of instrumental sort of training stuff. And a lot of the stuff where Ivan Drago, Dolph Lundgren's training is pretty much the stuff that you hear in Transformers. I think he just... He did a John Williams and just sort of copied himself a bit. But um, yeah, no, it was a it was a massive uh, soundtrack. It went to top ten nearly all over the world, and is still being played in gyms up and down the country to this day. <laughs> sure, it is. No, that's fair enough. That's a good shout. I have to say, it, 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 yeah, it just didn't come to mind. I just remember because I had like a copy of the cassette, like you know, it was in my Walkman a lot. If you remember Walkman, <laughs> they were like phones, but they only played so, so about 10 songs on a cassette. If anyone's listening, you could carry them around and they had headphones, but that's all they did. They only played music to our younger listeners. You can I see them. remember rightly, the early ones would only fast forward. Yeah, you were right. They would rewind. Yeah, you had to fast forward to the end of it to then go back. Yeah, you couldn't rewind, could you? No, not at all. But it is, but it is one of those. Don't know they're born. They haven't got a clue. They ain't got a clue. Not like 29 years ago <laughs> when they were all grunged up and listened to the single soundtrack. But no, go back That's to Rocky Four though. 
Rocky Four soundtrack. Half of these songs have been played again. Adverts, films, montages. They've all been covered probably by somebody at a different point in time. Now, I imagine, especially in America, I can imagine a lot of um probably during the American football games or during the breaks, they were probably played over the top of different scenes to get the crowd pumping. Especially living in America, James Brown, because that was that was everywhere over here. So in America, yeah, it was probably Absolutely. huge, even yeah. more, even more so. And it, yeah, and it sold a load. Again, it, I think the soundtrack might have been one of those. It might have made just as much profit as the film did. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that was probably the last big one on my list. I've got some honourable mentions as well. Um, anyone else got any big ones they want to drop in? Um, so from my honourable mentions, this pulls what I thought you might have said. I don't know. It's, I don't know why I thought you might have said it, but I I do, and that was Highlander. For some reason, I thought maybe you would talk about Highlander. Not even not necessarily as one of your top five, but even in a, as an honourable honourable mention, I thought Highlander would be in there. Is is one of my honourable mentions? Cool. I was going to go for Flash Gordon for similar reasons. <laughs> the queen connection yeah again it's not um anything special for queen fans would no doubt shoot me down for that but i think yeah, just I don't know. the way some I... of the, you know when you're watching the film you know it's a kind of magic when he when he, when he what's his name turns the camera and says it there's just something about the the, the way they've melded the music to, in the film yeah i don't yeah. necessarily think i would sit there and listen to the the entire album and it's and i and i think that's that, that's one of the rationales me for 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 the soundtrack for the film it, it's stonking um uh, and you know uh, as i said who wants to live forever all that kind of good stuff it, it's kind of magic but i i wouldn't listen to the soundtrack no. but but as a you know watching the, the film it's as, as we've spoken about it elevates the film as, yeah. as opposed to taking it away you must get goosebumps as it as it plays over what's happening which is yeah i guess the measure of a good a good choice of music but yeah certainly wouldn't listen to the whole album i have but i'm not a huge queen fan as it is anyway so it'd take a lot for me to sit down and listen to that entire album they had much better ones before that and my only other honorable mention that hasn't already been talked about i we had um you covered crow much much earlier is with Nell and I purely just for the fact of it's set in that time period the soundtrack to that kind of goes along so that you've got the white shade of pale you've got um, voodoo child all along the watchtower proper rock classics while my guitar gently weeps but again the the soundtrack as it plays over as the film's going kind of matches the what you're seeing on screen so like a white shade of pale is playing when the film opens and it's a kind of grimy east london cafe and it's just you've got this organ music of white shade of pale playing over the top as it as the camera pans across the the cafeteria i don't think they were called cafeterias back in the 70s but you know what i mean it just matches the what you're seeing on screen but again it's it's a load of songs from from that era shoved onto an album so it doesn't in my head doesn't quite count as a as a soundtrack if you see what i mean so i didn't put it as a top list and i don't even think it's the original version of white shade of pale to be fair i think it's recorded by someone else so if we decide to put that on our playlist we'll probably want to put the original <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, then, okay, but, so then it, but then it won't be authentic <laughs> we, need dodgy, we need the dodgy version yeah. Yeah, so carry on paul no so i was going to say a couple of honorable mentions to me uh forrest gump just because that has basically every song ever made <laughs> and ever and they want something to do with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but pretty much, um, you know, it, it's most of the doors. It's you know, um, a lot of great songs from those times. But it, it, where the, where the film goes on for about seven hours, it's literally got most of the songs ever written in the world ever. Um, 
but there's some stonking songs in it, and I'm a bit of a um, fan of the Doors. So, so the fact that it's got four or five different um, Doors songs on there, as well as um, some other classics, uh, has to be mentioned. The other one I went for as well, just for a, um, a, a honourable mention, just because, and it's not a soundtrack necessarily as such, but it's it's one of those ones where. It's such a great use of a song in a film. I had to mention it, uh, and uh, that was in Kingsman, where they got Freebird playing um, when um, Thingy Bob's in the chapel, and he basically slaughters everyone within or, or the, the whole of. of um, was, go on. That was really weird. I was going to say pretty much exactly the same thing for the Devil's Rejects. <laughs> <laughs> But, 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 but the fact that it, he, he's basically killing everyone in the church along to Freebird playing, A, it's one of the best fight sequences in a film, um, which is one thing. But then it's accompanied by Freebird, um, which which is just, yeah, the, 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 the pairing of the two just goes um, so, so well together. Um, and the only other honourable mention that I really wanted to talk about was Platoon and the Platoon soundtrack. Because again, it's, it's uh, another one. Yeah. So I, I had an astonished face then, but I've realised that no one would notice I had an astonished face. So I had to go, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, carry on. <laughs> yeah, so, so again, it's it's one of those things. So, so it's, it's good old classic songs from, from the time. Things like Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. Uh, respect to Aretha Franklin, uh, The Doors again, obviously, because it's um, it was a Vietnam. Vietnam exactly, yeah, you, you can't have Vietnam. But the thing I loved about it as well was um, the Art Adagio for Strings um, um, by uh, Barber. Um, so for anyone who hasn't seen Platoon, uh, it's not a spoiler, Jesus Christ, but one of the guys <laughs> gets killed. Um, and it's throughout some of the, the, the other sequences as well. But uh, as he's dying, Adagio is about uh, Barbara's Adagio for strings, which is a, a real big old classical um, um, song, uh, which was also done as a I don't want to say dance version, but um, it's the best I can come to say. It, but it was you know mixed as a dance version 20 years ago, um, and it's just you know bringing uh, another bit of classical music to. Um, the, the populace, yeah, um, and it, it's done in such a cool way, um, and yeah, deep and meaningful way. So that was the other honourable mention I had. Cool. Okay, I've, so that's your honourable mentions now, Brett. Uh, do we need I've, to sit down for like an hour and listen to this, or no? Nah, it's probably about uh, fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'll, I'll, I'll cut through some of them. I mean, to start with, Dazed and Confused, the Richard yeah. Linklater movie. Awesome soundtrack full of 70s, 70s bangers, as the kids say these days. Um, <laughs> big songs. Matthew McConaughey in his debut and still his finest work, in my opinion. The cast now are a who's who of all sorts of people now who, who went on to bigger and better things. But a lot of them, this was their first movie. Amazing soundtrack, 70s rock at its finest. Um, Empire Records. Amazing film, yeah. amazing soundtrack, loads of cool stuff in there. Um, Evan Dando's cover of The Bad Out Good Eye by Big Star. You've got Sugar High. You've got Say No More, Money More by R Rex Manning. Um, <laughs> Rex Manning. <laughs> and it's Rex Manning Day. You know, so amazing film, amazing soundtrack. Again, the two both that complement each other really well. With regard to, like, really good films with songs from that sort of time period on it goodfellas manages to sew in such so many good songs through the film probably the most memorable will be um <laughs> layla no no uh, yeah it's layla at the end yeah when it goes through all the dead bodies near the yeah. end yeah and um yeah all that sort of thing no it's not layla is it it's um not the dead bodies layla's when these sort of clearing house yeah well so what no is it in the white room you know i don't like claps in any way else, but um the song's good uh quadrophenia obviously the who did a soundtrack album to it but there's still a lot again of um 60s stuff thrown in there you know the sort of mod stuff and that again so you know a seminal movie especially if you're into all that stuff and um a great soundtrack both by the who and just the other people they're listening to through the film 
Uh, the Devil's Redex, we've already said, but that, again, that was for mainly for the free bread bit at the end where they get shot to pieces, but do survive. Um, another one, Arthur, mainly for the Christopher Cross song. I can't remember any other songs in the film, but it deserves it just for, for that one. What, the, you know, between the moon and, and New York, New York City? City. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, best, the best that you can do is fall in love. Oh, classic. That's a classic. That's, that has to be on the playlist. And my, my number one um, that I haven't mentioned so far yet, uh, a seminal movie with a seminal soundtrack, The Wanderers. Yeah. You know, so you've got like, I mean, obviously you've got The Wanderer performed by Dion, you've got Run Around Sue, Walk Like a Man by the Four Seasons, uh, Sherry, uh, Four Seasons Again, Stand By Me, Benny King. It is all sorts of, again, it is a lot of the songs from that time put on there, but for a lot of people, or myself, that was probably the first time I heard a lot of those songs, and they stuck with me from that film and 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 beyond. But yeah, great great film with great songs, and The Wanderer is always a tune. Um, I think I've skimmed through them quickly enough for you. Um, yeah, well, I, I hope you've left enough for uh, Volume Two if we oh, ever get round to doing it. Oh, there'll be more for Volume Two. <laughs> 